In the last lecture, I promised you that we were going to be able to do com computation using only logical and, logical or, logical not. Now, what I have to do first is show you how I can physically build those gates to compute and, or, and not. Essentially, implement those truth tables. Two inputs, one output for and and or, one input, one output for logical not. And I'm going to build those, and then in the next lecture, we're actually going to use those gates to actually do computation. All right, so let's start by building a couple of gates, and or not. All right, the building blocks of a modern uh, computer are transistors, and you've almost certainly heard of that word. I'm going to show you one version. There's many versions of transistors. I'm going to show you one that's particularly simplified, slightly dated. This is not what modern transistors look like, but I like this because I think it's particularly easy to explain. So here's the transistor. It's got a very simple um, construction. There is power that comes down, and the transistor can control this little door here. So when the door is open, nothing goes through, and then when the door closes, everything goes through. So what do I mean by that? So these are the two states. You can think about these as zero and one, by the way, obviously. You can think about this, if you want, as water coming down a hose, and here the hose is pinched. So nothing comes down, and if I took a reading down here, I would say there's no water coming out. Here I've unpinched the water, so it comes straight down, and I've got water, and I've got power. I've got a, a, a signal here. So obviously this is not gonna be water, it's gonna be electricity. I can stop the electricity from flowing, in which case I have zero. There it is. And I can allow electricity to go through, and I have one. There's my binary representation. These transistors represent, in one of two states, a zero or a one. And now what I have to show you is how do I combine these transistors, which are physical realizations of the language of computers, zero or one, in order to compute and or not, and then I have to show you how do I go from and or not to actual computations like addition and multiplication. All right, so let's start with logical and. So what do we know about logical and? Two in, one out. Two inputs, A and B, which can either be zero or one, and now we know that this transistor can represent one A, and this transistor can represent B. So here's a, tr here's a representation where I've, I've I've opened these doors so that I have a zero here and I have a zero here, and I have power here. So what did I do? I put these transistors in series. So I have power coming down, transistor one, which is A, that's the input A, and the output of that goes into the next transistor. So why is this okay? Well, because this is zero one. What's this? Zero one. So it's all fine. It's all the input to the output of one can be the input to the other. It's just power coming down. Okay. So let's think about the various state that these two transistors can be in. So here's the state zero zero. So if power is coming down here and this is a zero and this is a zero, then what's the reading down here in the little gauge that I had? Of course it's zero. Nothing comes down. It's being stopped twice, in fact. Okay. So let's uh, set one of these bits to be one. So power comes down. What's the reading coming out of this transistor? Zero. So if zero is coming into here, it is allowed to flow through, but there's nothing coming into there. So of course the reading here has to be zero. So input zero, input one, output zero. Okay, let's flip those. Let's say we allow the power to go through the first transistor, but not the second one. What's the reading here? So we've got power down to here, but then it stops. So the reading there is, of course, zero again. So one more, right? One, one. So now I have a clear shot through. Power comes down, goes through the first transistor, goes through the second transistor, and now I have a reading of one, and so the output is one. Okay? So let's think about, let's look at all four of these together and see what that looks like. So with two inputs, zero, zero, I get an output of zero. Zero, one, I get an output of zero. One, zero, I get an output of zero. 1, 1, I get an output of 1. What is this? It's an AND gate. It's an AND operator. So think of these le left to right here as the columns of the truth table. Four rows, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And think of this as the last column, which is the computation. So I've built an AND gate. I've built something that where I can set two inputs that's my input. I get to decide what those values are. And by simply putting these transistors in series, I have computed a logical AND. Great. 
okay, I can do computation now of a logical AND. Now I just have to be able to do OR and NOT. So let's do OR. Okay, just to remind you, that's an AND gate. So let's do an OR gate. Now, I know I need two transistors because I have two inputs, right? So there are my inputs. I just set them to be 0 and 1 for now. Let's think about the nature of an OR now that we've thought about through what happens when you put those two transistors in series. So the reason why that's an AND gate is the only way to get the power from the very top to the very bottom is both are 1, right? And that's the only time that an AND is true. But with an OR, I want something to come out if one is one, if the other one is one, or they're both one. So I don't want, I can't put them in series because one has the veto power. But I don't want anybody to have veto power. So what if instead of putting them in series, top to bottom, I put them in parallel like this? What happens? So let's think about the power coming down. I split the power along the top. I bring them down into both transistors. So this one stops the flow, but this one allows it, and out comes, and there's my 1. So as long as one of these is open, I'm going to get a 1 here. Now notice, by the way, if I switch these, if this was a 1 and that was a 0, I would still have a 1 here. The order of these doesn't matter. All right, what happens if they're both 1? No problem at all. I still get power out the other end. Good. And what happens if they're both 0? Power comes down, stops here, stops here, so I have a 0 here. What did I just do? I built an OR gate. If this is 1, 0, or 0, 1, power comes through because they're in parallel. If they're both 1, power comes through and I have a 1. And if and only if both of these are 0, then no power comes through and I get a 0. That is the definition of an OR gate. 2 in, 1 out. Of course, by the way, the power is just provided to you by the virtue of your battery or plugging in, so you don't have to worry about where that power comes from. All right, we have an AND and an OR gate. Both of them are built by putting two transistors, which simply represent one of two states, binary, in parallel for an AND gate, sorry, in series for an AND gate, and in parallel for an OR gate. Now we have to build a NOT gate. Okay, so a NOT gate only has one input and one output. So let me orient, orient you here. This is a little bit of a different picture here. Power comes down. This is the output right here. I'll describe this resistor to you in a second. So power comes down. And this is where our output has been, and now it's junk. We're simply going to ignore it. So I'm going to wire up the input here. I can control that transistor door. This is going to be my output. And of course, this is still the power. And this is a resistor. So what does a resistor do? The resistor said, look, power can come through here, but I don't like going through there. I prefer not to go there. And so if there's no other route to go, you can, you can come out this way. So what's going to happen is power is going to come down here, and it wants to go here, but this is totally shut off. And so the power will actually go through the resistor. But if this allows the power to go through, this way is seamless, frictionless. And so the power goes straight down, and it doesn't go out through the resistor, and then that's a zero. Ah, this looks about like what we want. On the previous slide, I had an input of zero which would not allow the power through, so the power has to go out through the resistor, and I get a 1 there, 0 to 1. Now, the power can come through, gets pushed out to junk, don't care, but there's no coming power out here because it didn't want to go through the resistor. I have a NOT gate. Now, for the NOT gate, of course, I only need one transistor and that little resistor right there, all of which, of course, are physically realizable. All right. So what have we done? We've taken this very, very simple little thing, this little tiny transistor. By the way, these are the, this is the magic of squeezing all that computation onto the phone in your pocket is because of those transistors every year get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And I can pack millions and billions of those into a square centimeter and do phenomenal computing power because they are the backbone of all modern computation. And we can build logical AND, logical OR, logical NOT from two transistors in series for an AND, two transistors in parallel for an OR, and a transistor and just a little resistor for a NOT. So now what I have to convince you of is that that's enough to do modern computation, which seems like a real stretch, by the way. I, you, you probably believe that I could build these gates, super simple calculations. But how do I go from those gates to actual computation? That's what we're going to see next. So see you in a little bit.